Well, it's a hot day on the farm today. We have about a 50 acre hobby farm and we have a Kubota MX5100 uh, diesel 4x4 uh, tractor. It's about 50 horsepower turbo. And we often find we need um, to manage the fuel with it and it's a bit of a pain. So I thought I'd show you how I plan to solve that with a uh, portable fuel container. So any of you that have got a mid-sized tractor like I do knows what a major pain it is to refill it. Um, I probably burn somewhere between one to two gallons an hour or about 48 liters per hour. And over the course of a year, again, don't use a lot, but let's say up to 50 hours. So I'll burn somewhere between uh, 200 to 400 liters of fuel. So I wanted something that is relatively uh, portable for use across the farm, something that's safe something that's relatively easy to use. If my wife wants to use it or kids can use it, they can they can manage that. I also wanted something that was relatively good quality. I looked around and debated about buying a, a cheaper fuel delivery system. But as you can see here, I ended up going with the Philrite uh, RD eight gallons per minute portable unit. It's a 12 volt unit. Uh, it's made in the United States and it's really good quality. So it, this will handle gas, it will handle diesel. Some of the other parts, I think it's always a good idea. Also bought a uh, uh, fuel tank filter to do and water separator, which is I think fairly critical to maintain the quality of the fuel going in. So uh, basically comes same thing, bought the three quarter inch and then a couple of parts from the local automotive place, a three quarter inch coupling, uh, adjustable coupling. You're gonna need a bunch of, of uh, three quarter inch fittings like this to, uh, to mount that. So this is a bit more of a close-up of the actual pump. You can see that I've started to do a little bit of assembly, but it's actually quite a small pump. It's not huge. Um, as you can see here, it's explosion proof, particularly important if you're working with gas, not just diesel. And you can see here, it has this uh, sort of a button switch on off uh, just below the mount. And my plan is to mount this vertically like this, but you could basically just have a portable unit as well. It comes, as you can see, the uh, the inlet few, uh, inlet hose is three quarter inch inlet, uh, three quarter inch inside diameter fuel transfer hose. Uh, it's got a static wire uh, to prevent um, explosion if you're grounding it properly, uh, and also made in the US. And then similarly, you've got the outlet uh, hose, which is uh, 10 feet and uh, comes with sort of a good quality manual uh, uh, handle as well. Um, the other thing you can see here is really heavy gauge uh, electrical wire. This is a 30 amp inline uh, fuse. And you can see that it's got positive negative to attach to your uh, power source and then a grounding wire as well that you would attach to uh, the chassis of your tractor or whatever you're filling to prevent uh, any explosion. My plan is to probably modify this a little bit. I'm gonna cut off the um, connectors uh, at, the end of the, at the end of this, these two here, and I attach a thing called Anderson power poles, which are these, these things. The other thing to consider is depending on your application, uh, I ended up cutting off this attachment. So if you're attaching to, uh, you know, to some connector that you need this, that's fine. I ended up cutting this off. This unit here will not fit inside a standard jerry can, whereas when it's cut off, this actually will. So for my use right now, I plan to uh, to just use that. You can also adjust the orientation of both the inlet. Uh, inlet side and the outlet side so you can mount them so it's pointed down or up or when any, any configuration you want which would allow you to mount directly to a, a fuel drum. To start assembly you can see here on the fuel filter there's an inlet side and an outlet side. Uh, similarly you've got the inlet side and the outlet side of the pump. My plan is to basically attach this to the pump side which will then attach directly to the filter then the swivel connector uh, attachment, and then in the female zone, I'll plug in the, uh, the fuel transfer hose uh, as well. So I'm gonna start to uh, put some uh, tape around these and then start to assemble it. Tools required, um, channel lock for uh, grabbing onto the pipe. This is one and a half inch, which is the fitting size um, for, for that fitting. Uh, this is a crimper for the Anderson power poles. 
and then just a pair of electrical uh, pliers to snip off the other pieces. Now the next step is just to basically assemble the parts, the inlet, the outlet, and then connect the, the fuel hose as well. This will give you a better sense now. So this is the inlet hose right here, the power connection inlet side. And again, these are adjustable outlet side, goes directly to the uh, fuel water separator here, uh, then to a swivel nozzle to the uh, pump hose, manual pump hose. I'm gonna trim off these uh, cables. You absolutely don't have to. Uh, you can attach these directly to, uh, to the um, battery if you need to but for me, the plugging capability is what I want to do. So I'm going to basically cut these off, replace them with this point, the Anderson power poles that I mentioned to allow me to have a quick connect to the yeah, I've got the 30 amp uh, terminals on here, but they're not crimped yet. It's pretty basic. You slide the uh, connector into the 30 amp tool. They're just spring loaded and compress. And you can see that it forms a hard crimp on that. Um, which will be uh, very well protected. I'll show you how it assembles. You take this piece and you slide it into this fitting. It's pretty basic, just slips in, clips in place. And then these two pieces can attach together. So it's just a sliding uh, piece that connects them. If I can get them slid in, there you go. And there's a pin. And then if you picture this end as an example, just picture sort of something similar on the tractor and coming off the battery. And that shows you what the connector actually looks like. So again, very easy, simple, a bit easier than jumper cables. This is the second part that I think is important. If you want something that's portable, what I've done is I've basically just taken a regular pallet. I've screwed down a sheet of plywood, a uh, four by four sheet of plywood onto the surface. I built a surround, as you can see, reinforced uh, a couple of sides, and then put in a, a half inch sheet of plywood at the back. And I typically use this for, I, I've made a couple of these to uh, allow me to move work around, whether it's chainsaws or, or other gear, um, and allows you to bring tools to a place by basically just loading this onto the forks. So my plan is effectively to attach the pump back here. And then as you can see, I can basically have a couple of jerry cans to feed it. Ultimately, if I want, it's pretty easy to also install um, either a 30 gallon drum or a 55 gallon so drum. You can start to see the configuration here. I've drilled four holes and through bolted some quarter inch bolts uh, into the back base here. And then what I need to do is basically just uh, tighten up these connectors. So I'll do that and then show you the final this is a fully assembled unit. You can see uh, this is set up for jerry can use, but again, I'm probably going to put in a 55 gallon drum or a 30 gallon drum. Uh, fully portable if I want to take it into the field or whatever, that's fine. Take the inlet hose, feed it into the uh, into the jerry can. As you can see, it fits nicely. Inlet hose goes into the pump, pumps through, goes through the filter water separator, goes out the outlet hose. I've got a little hanger there. And, uh, and then obviously the power cord as well that I just connect and using that power pole, just connect it. And what I tend to do is I drive my tractor in here and just fill it right here. Or if I need to, I can put up the whole thing on, the, on a set of forks and take it out into the field uh, to do work or to uh, load it into a trailer to refill. It's a nice morning here today. Thankfully, it's cooled down a bunch. Lots of rain as well. And as you can see, I've got the skid loaded in a trailer uh, to bring it out to a field to do some work. So convenient to do that. And then you can also see that I ended up not going for a fuel drum. I ended up going with this 50 gallon unit, uh, which is which is quite nice. Um, a little bit more secure. It comes with vents uh, and everything required. And it's uh, through bolted uh, to the frame uh, on the on the work pallet as well. Uh, and so this is, you know, it's more rated for transportation. I think just a, a good, you know, reasonable investment and it was on sale. Yeah, I could relocate this pump, uh, move the manifolds if I needed to, and then mount it on the, on the tank. So I might do that at some point, but for now this, uh, this works for me.
it's time to refuel. I spent the day box plating with the Kubota and uh, run down on diesel. So I'm gonna show you how this thing works. First step is to take the power cable and ground it with the green grounding cable. So take this off. You can see the grounding thing right here. So I'm gonna take the ground and just ground it to part on the chassis like that. And then as I mentioned, I've got the Anderson power pole connectors and I basically just make the connection here. These connects together. Okay, so this is the uh, the pump. There's a switch down at the bottom here. Just push it in. Runs into the fuel filter right here, the water separator, and get wet, and basically just pump away. Nice and easy compared to using jerry cans. And hope this is helpful for you in filling your tractor.